Hey, welcome back to Turok Dinosaur Hunter 2, Seeds of Evil with the Speed Mod. We're at the last level of the Primogen's Lightship, which will be interesting because we will neither see nor fight the Primogen in his Lightship. Instead, we will fight an entire different boss at the end of the level entirely, but how about we just get to that, shall we? Primogen's light chip. Little is known about this mysterious and ancient vessel. The light chip is believed to be maintained by a horde of lethal biomechanical droids programmed to do their master's bidding. The vessel itself is massive and is undoubtedly well defended. Your mission objectives are as follows. Destroy three automated assembly plants. The Primogen's lightship is completely self-sufficient and can supply itself with an army of biobots manufactured deep within the superstructure. In the event that the Primogen is defeated, the biobots have been programmed to exit the lightship and eradicate intelligent life from the face of the lost land as one last twisted act of revenge by the Primogen. You must destroy all of the assembly plants within the lightship. Purify the river of souls. The waste created by the lightship's power cells is responsible for the toxins that poison the river of souls. By reversing their polarity, the toxins will be eradicated and the river of souls will flow pure for the first time. Tens of thousands would benefit from its clean, cool waters. Alright, so here we are. Opening area is this hub region right here. There are four doors on all around with the fifth at the end. Only one is open at the moment. As we go through each door, we unlock the next until the fifth and final door is open. This force field right here is currently locked and behind it, the last primogen key. I will, uh, when I get to the, the final video, I will show you how to get all the primogen keys. So you'll notice I will conspicuously not go down certain pathways. Within each of the four regions, there is a switch. Once all four switches are hit, you get the Primogen key for here. Shredding. Flying up to the vent, I grab that ion capacitor. There are four of these in each of the four wings, 16 in total. You need them to shut down the generators that are poisoning the river's souls. These guys here with the steam stacks, well, couple of ion capacitors, and a whole load of explosive shells. They are spoiling me with destruction. Uh, those biobots there with the steam stacks, they, I think they hit scan with their bullets. So it's good to kill them fast because you can't dodge their shots. The other biobots indeed fire lasers and you can dodge those. Ah, this area here is our first uh, little branching pathway. Uh, the branch goes to the switch that shuts off this wing's primogen key lock. 
I'm not going to do that now, save that for the next video, but our last ion capacitor is here, so we're ready to shut down the first power generator. Or recode it, I suppose. Here it is, and there's the River of Souls it's sitting on. There we go. Power generator recalibrated. We get all four of those done, and it'll be the first time since the dawn of time that the River of Souls hasn't been deathly poisonous. And here we are, back at the hub. Ultra health. Beside that Ultra Health, there was a switch that opened the door to the next wing. We do that a few more times, and we're off to the boss. a few of these little vent regions. They are not a lot of fun. They actually slow down the pace of the speed mod. Uh, you don't really notice it, I'm sure. I don't remember. Without the speed mod, because Joshua just moves too slow, but yeah, they're, they're slow here. So that switch activated a little moving platform that I could have hopped on, but you know, when you can just clamber up the ledge, why not? So I went down here to kill an enemy, but as I guess I forgot, the enemy spawns in once you hit a certain switch, so although that's a dead end, someone will come through there in a moment. So those lasers will hurt us. Uh, there he is, see? Crap, spawn ends. So you'll see there are a couple, uh, the lasers don't instantly hurt us, but if I linger I will take damage. Uh, there are a couple of fans that are on, a couple that aren't, so I have to sort of filter my way up here. And instead of completing the whole puzzle, the speed mod means I'm fast enough to just jump over and skip the end of it, which is nice. It is possible in that section there to fall down on the wrong side, and Joshua can't actually fit through the gap. So you're just forced to sit there and slowly take damage from the lasers until you die. Considering I have uh, 220 health, it's a big waste of my time. And another vent area. Just going up to tag the checkpoint for later on. But our path forward is actually down. I don't believe these fans can actually hurt Turok. There are other fans that can and do. Not that one. Ah, and, and right there, that enemy, that biobot, just hit the switch to close the bridge there. That is a scripted sequence. You cannot stop it. And that little movement I made with my mouse was pointing out uh, one of the last weapons we get in the game. So I'm going to go pick that up. Hello, Xena. We have a Shakram. I'm not going to use it in this video. I'm not a big fan of the Razor Wind. I prefer to kill things faster, and although that weapon is fun to use and gory and wonderful, it appears too late in the game, frankly, for me to make big use of it outside of uh, acquiring it early with cheats. But I'll use it next video. Show it off. So that little vent detour, fortunately there aren't too many of those in this area. They're not a lot of fun. Again, the vents are kind of awkward and slow me down more than I'd like. But there it is. Ah, we don't have the ability to get through here yet. That's our last feather ability. So we will be back for here.
Yeah, so this section's moderately annoying because those doors only stay open for a few seconds. And there's an ion capacitor on either side. Alright, that's it for this region. Two wings down, two generators down, and here we are back at the hub. There's the next switch, and the next wing is open. You'll notice there are power-ups waiting for us around that central force field every time we come back here. That is a little respawn ammo point, which is convenient for us. As you can see, we have been able to stick with exploding shotgun shells for much of the level. I was really hoping for some more shredder ammo there. Mag 60 though. There we go, that's what I was looking for. So mini puzzle here, there are three switches around this one locked room and I need to go in there to get one of the capacitors. I missed one of the locks on the other side, so I gotta go back and do it. It is timed, so now they've all reset, so yeah. There's one, yeah, see they reset. Two, and three. Now it's open. This is the last little detour in these tunnels. Those fans that are at the end of tunnels actually do cause damage. Fortunately, the ones that send you up and down do not. The lasers will, though. I want to make sure I don't touch the lasers. Yep, I accidentally flew right into a fan there. One of the reasons I'm mapping out those dead ends is because it will help me when I come back in the last video to remember where the primogen key force field switches are. I can quickly look at my map, see the area I didn't fully map out, and that'll help out, so. 
I'm not just doing it for fun. Like that right there. That is one of the other Primogen map keys. Uh, sorry, one of the other Primogen force field keys for this level. Uh, not mapping that out, so I know to come back here. Ah, I reached the point where I am out of ammunition for the shotgun. There were some other guns then. One of the reasons why I like the Shredder so much versus other heavier ordnance is you may have noticed that the regular shot for the Shredder is very effective at shooting those annoying little turrets that automatically pop up in the various tunnels. Switching be between those two with the quick change ammo key is, well, very efficient in destroying things. This area right here, not only is that uh, poisonous water, but those lasers, they cause quite a bit of damage. I don't think I take damage here. I hope I don't. Oh yeah, ooh. <laughs> that was like 50 damage per hit. I nearly died there. There we go, though. One more to go. And we're back to the hub. I believe there's another ultra health waiting for me. Yeah, here we go. And we're on to our last wing. Just wanted to make sure I picked up that missile launcher there, uh, the ammo for it, so that the next time I come around, some useful ammo, like exploding shotgun shells, will have spawned for me. Now, you may have noticed that we haven't done any of the other destroy the assembly line factory objectives. As you may have guessed, we're going to find them all here now that we are in the final leg of the ship. And in fact, here we are. In every one of these little alcoves where the tiny wheel biobots pop up, there will always be exploding shotgun shells. So do make sure you grab them. Oh, and that, that big guy blew up. Those big, giant, Dash Rendar shoulder pad looking robots. Uh, I haven't given them a chance to do this, but like the dinosaurs, they do have, some of them, invisibility capabilities. And if you leave them alone for a second, they will turn it on and start trying to melt you with laser beams while invisible. I just, like I say, haven't given them a chance to use that ability. If I can help it, I'm, I'm not gonna. Just, <laughs> just saying. And this right here is our first objective. Uh, I miss this a lot in regular playthroughs because having to shoot that tiny box to get to those weird pistons is not immediately obvious nor is the portal activation lock right there, but so it goes. Uh, that was the portal that I just unlocked. I don't have uh, what I need to get to it, 
which is the Eagle Feather, because that is the new ability portal. So I will be back for that in a moment. And I do mean a moment because, uh, well, there's the other assembly plant. There's a feather. I just picked up an ion capacitor. This door just opened up. And here's another assembly factory line. Grabbing these laser cells. Uh, I, I actually grabbed them a bit early. I should have kept going and gotten that on my return trip. And red laser beams, which we know hurt us. So that's the last assembly line. Here's the trick. We swap out these blue laser cells with the red laser cells. And there we go. All assembly plans shut down. We now have all the Eagle Feathers. We can now get all the Primogen Keys. We can now access every secret optional area in the game. Now we don't need the nuclear weapon to defeat the final boss. In fact, the nuke gun kind of stinks. But let's get it. Alright, so the Flesh Eaters and Oblivion making a big stink about how everything is doomed and, well, I'm just going to clown on them right here.
I mean, they really don't stand a chance. These guys were a little bit frightening when I didn't have much of an arsenal. But I have every weapon now. Again, barring the nuke, but the nuke's kind of useless. Oh, I have full ammo for the shotgun. Okay, great. Last nuke weapon. And more dialogue. Thank the council that you still live, Turok. This new evil continues to confuse me. Though I do not understand its power, I feel that its source is eternal. Do not let this threat deter you. The primogen must be stopped or all is lost. It was really no big deal, Adon. And as I mentioned to Crow in an earlier video, this, all this storytelling is set up for Turok 3 Shadow of Oblivion. There will be no payoff for this at all in this game. But hey, we got everything that isn't a Primogen key. And well, now we can uh, go fight the boss. All right, and you know it's a final boss when, like in Turok Dinosaur Hunter, there is a gauntlet of weapon pickups. But here we go. Let's see what's been uh, keep an eye on the Prodigy's Lightship this whole time. As I said, it is not the Primogen. It is some horrific flesh monstrosity known as the Mother. This creature is related to the Flesh Eaters and by extension the Blind Ones and Oblivion in some way, shape, and form. Let's try out the nuke, shall we? <laughs> did you see that? The nuke did the same amount of damage as an exploding shotgun shell. The nuke. We've, uh... We've gone through a whole whack of Oblivion portals. Slaughtered countless flesh eaters. Assembled it piece by piece. And it's as effective, damage-wise, as an exploding shotgun shell. Whoop-dee-doo. Anyways... <laughs> Here's the first stage of the boss fight. A little fun fact, in the Nintendo 64 version, there were no health bars, so you never really knew what stage you were about to go on to, uh, unless you were paying attention to how many limbs you've blown off. I do appreciate that Night Dive just added in the health bar for this one. I mean, why not? Unlike earlier bosses like the, the Mantis Queen, the Mother is more susceptible to exploding splash damage. So I don't know why I'm using the Hellfire Cannon here. I should switch guns.
the monster seems really annoyed. And uh, this right here is why I didn't invite C. Jacobs back for this video. <laughs> a Lovecraftian flesh monster spider is probably not something he wanted to endure. If it wasn't clear, the face is the weak point for this fight. And as you can see, it really doesn't take much. There we go. And unique for a Turok 2 boss fight. The monster backs away and roll credits for the level. That's it. We beat the Primogen's Lightship. Next level, we're going to get the keys and head on to the Primogen itself.